Suppose that we want to get the area under the graph of the function y of x between x equals a and x equals b. For simplicity, we will assume that y of x is positive for values of x between a and b. We can imagine dividing the area under the curve between x equals a and x equals b into n rectangles of equal width. We will call the width delta x. Now, let's suppose that the height of each rectangle is the value of the function at the bottom left corner of the rectangle. So if the bottom left corner is x sub k, then the height of the rectangle will be the value of the function y at x sub k. So this distance here is y of x sub k. So you can see that some of these triangles are drawn. So the left corner, the, the top left corner is at the curve. That's the case for the first three um, rectangles here actually. But this one is a bit different actually. The right corner is in contact with the curve. And similarly here the right corner. So we will just assume that the left corner is in contact with the curve. So the height of this first rectangle is the value of the function at a, it's y of a. Now, since we have n rectangles, the width of each rectangle is the length of the interval, which is b minus a, that's this distance here, divided by the number of rectangles, which is n. So b minus a over n is our delta x. Now for the sake of notation, we could call the point A x1. It's the bottom left corner of the first rectangle. The bottom left corner of the second rectangle we will call x2. Since we have n rectangles, we will call the bottom left corner of the last rectangle xn. Now we're going to assume that the rectangle is drawn in such a way that, as I said earlier, the top left corner intersects the curve to get the area of this first rectangle, we multiply the width by the height, which is y of a. We could, of course, also write this as y of x1 times delta x. The area of the rectangle next to it is the height of it, which is y of x2, times the width, which is delta x. The area of the last rectangle is y of xn times delta x. So. We sum uh, the areas of rectangles, that gives us an approximation to the area under the curve. We could have used sigma notation to represent this sum. We're summing the subscript k from 1 up to n. So the, when k is 1, we have y of x1 times delta x, that's the first term. k is 2, we have y of x2 times delta x. And finally, when k is n, we have y of xn times delta x. Now we can imagine making the number of rectangles increase indefinitely. Let n tend towards infinity. And we will get a better and better approximation to the area under the curve. But letting n tend towards infinity, letting the number of rectangles increase, means that the width delta x has to decrease if those rectangles are to fit under the curve. So this limit is actually equivalent to taking the limit as delta x tends towards zero. We have, of course, the same sum as before, but we're using a slightly different notation here. The first rectangle, as we saw, has area y of a times delta x. So the first value that goes in for x here is a. So rather than plugging 1 in for k and calling um, the leftmost point of the rectangle x1, we can just plug in a here. Then we would add delta x onto a. So the next value in this sum would be y at a plus delta x times delta x. Then we add on another delta x and so on. So what I mean is we could write this sum in this way here. So we plug a in for x, as I said already. So we have y of a is the height of this first rectangle times delta x. Um, the next point, which we call x2 before, is actually a plus delta x. So the width of this rectangle is delta x. We add delta x onto it to get this um, second x value here. And we multiply that. We get y of that to get the height of this rectangle. Multiply by delta x to get the area. Uh, then we add another delta x onto this here. So we get um, the bottom left corner of the third rectangle. That's a plus delta x plus delta x or a plus two delta x. We get y at that value and we multiply by delta x to get the area of the third rectangle. 
Now, as I said, the fourth rectangle should have its leftmost point top corner at the curve rather than the right point. We're working with the uh, bottom left corner actually. So the height of this rectangle should be the value of y at this point here rather than the value of y at this point. S the same is true for the last rectangle. So we see that the area of the second rectangle is given by a y of a plus 1 delta x. The area of the third rectangle is given by y of a plus 2 delta x. Um, so the area of the nth rectangle, that's the last rectangle, is given by y of a plus n minus 1 times delta x. So this is the second rectangle, this is the third rectangle. So the nth rectangle is given by this. The coefficient of delta x is 1 less than the number of the rectangle. It's 1 less than n for the last rectangle. So we will be taking the limit as delta x tends towards 0 of this sum. Of course, as delta x tends towards 0, n is obviously going to tend towards infinity. So we will have an infinite series. If this sum can be found, it is called a definite integral of y of x from x equals a to x equals b, and it is written like this. So we replace delta x with dx, and we replace this sigma notation and this limit with this integral sign, which is like an elongated s. Think of s for sum. We're summing these quantities here from a to b. Now let's take an example of this limiting procedure. We will take the graph of y equals x squared between x equals 0 and x equals 1. And uh, we will calculate this limit. Now we know from integration that this limit is the integral of x squared dx from 0 to 1. So we integrate x squared, that's straightforward, and we apply our limits and we get one third. Let's now do it using th this limiting procedure. So let's suppose that we have n rectangles underneath the curve from x equals 0 to x equals 1. What's the width of each rectangle? Well, we know that that's just got by getting the length of the interval, b minus a in general, where b is 1 and a is 0, and dividing by the number of rectangles, which is n. So in this case, b minus a is 1 minus 0, which is 1. So the width is 1 over n. Notice that the height of each rectangle um, is the value of the function at the bottom left corner of the rectangle. We could use the bottom right corner, and then the rectangles, the sum of the rectangles would be greater than the area of this piece. But it doesn't matter. Um, as the number of rec rectangles increases, the sum of the area of them will approach the area under the curve. So here we will have an underestimate for the area. Now the x coordinate at the bottom left corner of the first rectangle is 0, as you can see, and the height of that rectangle will also be 0, because the value of this function at 0, which is 0 squared, is 0. Now what about the first rectangle? Well, this point here will be 1 over n because the width of each rectangle is 1 over n. So we just add 1 over n onto 0, that gives us 1 over n. And the height of this rectangle is the value of the function x squared at 1 over n. So it's going to be 1 over n squared. That's this value here. To get the x value of this point here, well, the y value is obviously 0 because we're on the x-axis. We just add 1 over n onto 1 over n. That gives us 2 over n. And to get the height of this rectangle, we just get the value of the function at 2 over n. So this value here will be 2 over n squared. Uh, so that's 2 over n times 2 over n, or 2 squared over n squared. And so on. This point here is 1 over n plus 2 over n, which is 3 over n. And the height, again, is 3 over n all squared. So that's going to give us 3 squared over n squared. So here is the area, well, just the area of the first few rectangles. The area of the first rectangle is 0 because its height is 0. Um, well, it's the value of the function times 1 over n, 0 times 1 over n, which is 0. For the second rectangle, the value of the function is 1 over n squared. That's the height. And we multiply that by the width. Well, the width of each rectangle is 1 over n. So that's the area of the second rectangle. 
the area of the third rectangle is is uh, 2 squared over n squared times 1 over n and the fourth one is 3 squared over n squared times 1 over n. Now since the first rectangle has an area of 0 we could just ignore that 0 and call the first rectangle this one here. We could say that this is the first rectangle so its left corner is 1 over n. The second rectangle has a left corner at 2 over n. So that means that the k rectangle has a corner at k over n. So the area of the kth rectangle um, is the value of the function at k over n, which is k squared over n squared. So we just square this number, and uh, we have to multiply that by the width of the rectangle, which is 1 over n. Now let's look at the last rectangle. I'll just draw it in roughly here. It's supposed to have the same width as the others, but I'm just trying to fit it in here. So the top left corner intersects the curve, or is on the curve, I should say. So what's this number here? Well, we could do that in two ways. One way is to look at the last number, which is 1, and subtract the width of the rectangle, which is 1 over n. So it's going to be 1 minus 1 over n. Well, that's n over n minus 1 over n, which is n minus 1 over n. We could also look at the pattern here. The first rectangle is this one here. Its left corner is at 0. The second rectangle has its left corner at 1. The third rectangle has its left corner at 2 over n. Um, so the nth rectangle will have its left corner at n minus 1 over n. We just take 1 from the number of the rectangle. So to get the area of this last rectangle, we have to square n minus 1 over n. And that's the height, and we multiply by the width, which is 1 over n. So we can use a sigma notation now, so the area of the kth rectangle is given by this here. Actually, this is the k plus first rectangle. Um, it's just I'm ignoring this rectangle. The first rectangle has a height of 0, so I'm just ignoring it. Okay, so I'm calling, I'm actually calling the second rectangle the first rectangle. Um, it's just a bit more straightforward. So our formula is k squared over n cubed. So k squared by 1 over n squared by n. And we have to sum from k equals 1 up to n minus 1. Okay, so if k is 1, you can check that. You will indeed get this term here. You'll get 1 over n cubed, which is this term. If k is 2, you will indeed get um, 2 squared over n cubed. If k is n minus 1, you'll get n minus 1 squared over n cubed, and that's the last term. So remember that one is just a con or n is just a constant, so we can take out 1 over n cubed, um, factorize that out of this term, take it outside the sigma sign. n is a number that we... That's the number of rectangles that we're using. And then we just have to sum k squared from k equals 1 to n minus 1. Now you might have seen this result before. This is the sum of the squares of the first n natural numbers. So this here is 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared as far as n squared. So that's what we have here, except we don't have the sum of the first n uh, squares, but the sum of the first n minus 1 squared natural numbers. So we just have to take this formula and replace n with n minus 1. So this is what we get. We plug n minus 1 in here, we get n minus 1. When we plug it in here, we get n minus 1 plus 1, which is n. When we plug it in here, we get uh, 2n minus 2 plus 1. That's 2n minus 1. So we multiply this out. I multiplied n by n minus 1 here. And then multiplying this out, we get this here. Next, I will multiply 1 over n cubed into the numerator. I won't put the n cubed into the denominator. You'll see why in a minute. So we have 1 over n cubed by 2n cubed. Well, that's 2. 1 over n cubed by minus 3n squared is minus 3 over n. And finally we get n over n cubed. That's equal to 1 over n squared. So this expression here gives us the area of the n rectangles under the curve from 0 to 1. And of course we know that if we take the limit as n tends towards infinity, then the area of the rectangles will approach 
the area under the graph of y equals x squared from 0 to 1. But now you can see what happens if we take this limit. Um, if n goes to infinity, th this will go to 0. This will also go to 0. So we'll end up getting 2 over 6, which is 1 third. And as you see, that's what we saw before if we do the integral of x squared dx from 0 to 1.